Okay, hi Danielle, if you could just request to join. Let's see. Hello. Hi. Hi Danielle. Okay, so now we are live. Um, I have the luxury of actually sitting in front of an original Danielle Tegeter. So I have one of her paintings I was lucky enough to buy. So I just, if anybody's wondering what my background is, that's what it is. I'm just gonna put this a little forward here. Um, and I'm so excited. I think a few people are joining. I can already see. Welcome everyone, welcome. Uh, so this is part of a series of Q&A interviews that we're doing with EFA Studio member artists. Again, to just check in on people and see how um, everyone's sort of career and practices have been evolving and changing and, you know, facing some of the current, uh, you know, problems that we're having right now. So uh, we're very lucky to have Danielle Tegeter. Um, I just want to introduce myself briefly as well. My name is uh, Natalia Nakazawa, and I am the Assistant Director for the Elizabeth Foundation for the Arts Studio Program. And I've been at EFA for over eight years now, so it's been quite a, a long journey. And, um, you know, we're very excited to, to eventually start moving towards reopening. Um, but currently the studios are still closed. So being that we're still closed, all of our artists are sort of out in the field. Um, so I'm also going to introduce Danielle. Uh, and Danielle is an artist who uh, has been working for the past 15 years in the sort of expanded field of painting and abstraction. Uh, recently, she's begun to include large scale installations, sculptural objects, video, sound, animation, um, and again, something that we're working, something that we're going to be talking about today is the pandemic salon that she's been working on uh, since we've all been in this uh, quarantine situation. So I'm really excited. I think we're going to have a great conversation and find out more about the pandemic salon, uh, which again, uh, the, the topics uh, addressed during these salons um, really range in topic from illness to anarchy to uh, addressing isolation. I mean, some of the heaviest, but also the most urgent topics that we're facing right now. So I'm really excited. Hi, Danielle. Hi, everybody. So I just want to say welcome. I'm seeing a lot of familiar names. So um, great to see everybody. <laughs> and um, it's great to be here. And thanks to Natalia and the Elizabeth Foundation for asking me. And you know, as Natalia said, you know, like you all, you know, we've been in quarantine from our studios. And um, as some of you know, I'm someone who physically usually makes objects. And so, um, you know, being not being able to go to the studio on a regular basis has been, um, you know, a real adjustment. And I just want to talk a little bit about the birth of the pandemic salon. I mean, that's what I'm going to that's what I want to focus on today, because um, that's really come out of being um, out of this whole situation, this whole crisis and being in quarantine. And for me, it's really been the most um, really kind of satiating and exciting thing that has come out of this. And just a, a brief little history of the pandemic salon is, um, you know, I am a professor at Lehman College at CUNY, and I teach a class that is a field trip based class. And we were, of course, put into quarantine. Um, my class is about leaving the classroom and going out. I call it art in the trenches, <laughs> you know, going out, out of the classroom to see artists that are alive and making work and other people in the art world. We were put in quarantine and um, we're also, you know, housebound. I teach in the Bronx. Um, it was a very hard hit area and still is. And my students really requested, would you continue? And I said, yes, but let's turn this into a community forum. And we did, and it's turned out to be um, pretty amazing. So the pandemic salon has been going on bi-weekly. We've had seven salons with topics each week. Um, illness, magic, architecture, isolation, 
this Saturday is memorialization um, coming out of how are we going to memorialize 25,000 people? How are we going to memorialize uh, the protests and the struggle and so forth that we're all going through? And the week after that, um, I'm very excited that we're going to have anarchy, <laughs> which so will not be boring. <laughs> Um, they are all on, on Vimeo. Um, there's three to four speakers every salon from artists, activists. We've had medical archivists from the Burns Collection, Liz Burns, who is amazing. We've had poets, C.A. Conrad, amazing poet. We've had, um, you know, Warren James, great architect, also the director of architecture at Oh My. What a, what a treat. What a gift. I mean, that's incredible. So as you know, as an artist for me, it's a way that I can really bring in a cross disciplinary collection of people in a way that are so uh, diverse from one another and interesting to have a conversation. But the community of people, yeah, you know, we've had between 30 to 100 people each salon um, and from about 10 different countries across across the country as well. Um, lots of different time zones. So was there a particular format that you were referencing? Like what inspired the salon format? Well, of course, Gertrude Stein inspired the salon, right? Yeah. So um, of coming together and having discussions. Um, so that was the original, you know, I mean, the original inspiration. So now it's a virtual, <laughs> a virtual Stein salon. Virtual Stein Salon. Um, and I, I feel like in some ways what's been amazing is um, be, having it virtual has really kind of, we've crossed every, you know, all these borders. Absolutely. Countries, time zones, uh, people, you know, different places and so forth. So that's been really exciting. Yeah. And, and again, um, having seen some of the salons, the, it really unfolds both organically, but then it is really nice to have sort of formal presentations that are short each one is about 10 minutes long. Um, so it's, it's really nice to have such a, like, a well-curated, it's, I mean, again, such a treat to have such a well-curated group of, you know, professionals, again, a, a running across all different types of disciplines um, and presenting on such narrow, top, like, you know, very specific topics, which I think helps to keep it focused um, and, again, move through some of our concerns and our biggest, like, sort of most urgent topics um, and I've been really, I've been really heartened by seeing how much participation is happening um, and how you've been able I, to, to contact all these people and have, and have such I mean, I think that, um, I think one thing that we all, certainly I hunger for in the art world was this, you know, this, the community of the art world, you know, especially maybe in the 60s and 70s, and maybe I've romanticized that a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think fully that, you know, you would have, um, you know, collaborations with poets and artists and musicians and writers, and there would be this cross discipline. And I think some, you know, somehow the art world has grown so much, and all these worlds have grown so much. It's much, you know, it's harder to facilitate that. There's and also, I feel like it's lacking in um, some of that intergenerational space where it's sort of like you ask your elders a few questions, you get like, in, in some ways, the art world has become so professionalized and so insular that in some ways, there's no one to turn to, to ask these questions that maybe fall outside of just formal, you know, a formal art practice. So it seems yeah. really refreshing. And like some of the inspirations, you know, and you said 10 minute, um, you know, presentations, it is 10 minutes, and I do keep it everyone kind of moving along. Um, it's like Pecha Kucha's yeah, you know, definitely where you have a certain amount of time um, to present. So most people show images, not everyone, but there's also a lot of musicians, um, you know, poets, um, but there's a certain amount of time and then we move forward. So you get a lot of information from a lot of different diverse places mm -hmm. um, and it moves pretty quickly. So obviously you've had already um, quite a few people come through. Is, has there been any particular highlight or something that was, you know, just sort of thought provoking or sent you off into some other space you weren't anticipating? There's so many unexpected moments in this. Um, it's really hard to choose one of them, you know. We love but all of them. Me, but... <laughs> I mean, for me, just, you know, the juxtaposition of having people together, like we had um, Cardone, who is a, 
he's a magician, um, even more than a magician, you know, yeah. he's like, a, he's like a performance artist. Oh my God. He makes you suspend your belief system. That's what he is. We can categorize him along with like C.A. Conrad, who I'm sure many of you know, is just a great poet. And to see those, um, you know, people who probably would have never have met in a right. way, be able to interact and to present together. Um, that's been just amazing to me. And, I, you know, I love, um, we had William Barnett, who uh, is a medical historian, um, really smart, really just incredible. Um, he has a great book, The Sick Rose, that is in every single bookstore. You probably know it, all these medical, the history that's of medical so cool. illustration. Um, he's based in Edinburgh. He was just fabulous, you know, but we've had so many amazing speakers, you know, um, you know, Paul Clements, who's great architect, uh, architecture photographer who's been photographing New York without um, any people in it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, work that really is pertinent to, you know, what's going on in many ways. I mean, I just th think of it as such um, an open forum that's also so responsive that you, you know, it's, it's at one time sort of this, uh, yeah, very open format, but then the fact that you can be so responsive, address issues as they're coming up and concerns as they're coming up, I think is, uh, it's just a very relevant way of, you know, convening people. So I'm super appreciative of the whole project. And it does make me think like, you know, what parts of this type of working do you think you might maintain or keep with you, even if you are able to go back or when we're able to go back? <laughs> studio practices. And... Well, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I don't, I don't see this ending in some ways. It's yeah. just been so interesting to do and it's become in some ways part of my work, you know, and, Absolutely. you know, I think that I would like to see some of these salons become like physical salons. In well, it just made me think of your work, you know, like some of the, um, you know, some of the sort of expanded architectural pieces where it's like, it's creating this holistic installation. They're like sites for activity and excavation. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something within painting that I've been thinking a lot about over the past, you know, five years is how does painting fit into this interdisciplinary world that we live in, in the art yeah. world? and other places and does painting have to be a stable entity that stays on the wall and so you know most of my shows have dealt with the work moving performance and painting um a lot of collaborations with um a choreographer musicians animation so it's been about putting painting and you know obviously one thing painting, especially abstractions, still hold this idea of utopian, a utopian political yeah, yeah. state. And, um, you know, that's definitely comes into what a lot of the salons are about as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that's really exciting. Also, have you been able, has this, I know you and Pablo have a lot of probably collaborative moments, but has this been like a particularly <laughs> more collaborative moment or is this just an ongoing kind That's of thing? interesting. So Pablo Elguera is my husband for anyone who's on here who, does yes. not who doesn't know. already know. <laughs> um, and yeah, also Pablo an EFA and studio have very, member. We have very different practices as most of my work right. is about abstraction, architecture. Um, Pablo obviously is more social practice, but we do have a, a collective Alpine rooster that we've done together and that does connect into this in some way um, but this in some ways has not been collaborative it was my project um, Pablo's doing a ton of other projects oh, I was just wondering because I, I know he's there I do but rope I him into doing a presentation every other week because he's right. actually he's so good <laughs> <laughs> great. He's so great at presentations. No, that's great. Because I was just sort of curious. I actually didn't know we hadn't talked about this before, but I didn't know if this was like because it's in your home and all of yeah. a sudden, you know, the domestic it's space, the people yeah. in your home are taking over. But no. But okay. our daughter makes cameo and our cat makes cameo. <laughs> <laughs> I know. There's just no no way to not have cameos. 
it's really exciting. But I, I, you know, I think the end point of the salon is really, I would love to do some of these in physical spaces um, and, you know, maybe even a publication. Um, you know, as for now, they're being documented, they're recorded, they're all on Vimeo. Um, anybody who wants to attend, you could just like DM me, um, you know, and request the Zoom password for Saturday. Um, I do it tomorrow. Oh, and then I put it out the day before. Great. Apologies, I'm just recording the screen, so I'm I had to go away for. I thought what I would do is um I would show a little piece of it. Um, Fantastic. Yes, I think that would be great just to kind of get the sense of what it is. So let me see. This is the uh, the one on architecture we did a few weeks ago, and. Sophie Kahn, who's also an Elizabeth Foundation fellow and um, was in this as well. So, and Sophie Kahn works, did she discuss her body scanning? Yeah. kinds of universal illness and, and, fantastic. and machines. And... Cool. Very so this cool. is just the very beginning. I'm just going to show a minute of the opening of it. But again, it's online for people. But this will give you a little bit of a taste. You sound great. Yeah. It's short 10 minutes or less each person um there's not and I, I kind of keep things moving as we go along and today um our topic is the very timely subject of illness um which there's so much to say on I mean you know we, we could have done a whole you know 10 slums on this mm -hmm. pretty much you know, I we have some great too. We have a philosopher here, we have artists, we have a medical historian to talk with you. Danielle, um, can you just can you just um can you just expand it? Talking, Say it again. Can you could you just expand it? Yeah. Because uh, we can't really see anything. It's sorry. Really... What are the what are the ramifications in the long run socially, um, city development wise? Um, from pandemics and so forth. So there's a, a lot to go for. So I do want to give just a few minutes for people just to say a quick hello. We do this every salon. Um, so I'm going to mute everybody. That gives you a little bit of a taste. Um, so every salon, um, people are coming in from all over the world. They introduce themselves. Mm -hmm. And then we go into 10 minute presentations. There's some discussion that goes on along in the chats and many of these people have books or their work that gets put out also for people to research. Um, I usually do a little bit of a presentation on the subject. Um, and every week we close with reading names of um, people who died of COVID that week. So right. this is a somber but important moment of why you know, we're doing this essentially. Right, but it, it sort of offers maybe a potential moment for everyone to process or like honor people. Yeah, you know, this week will be on memorialization um, and we have a sociologist who will talk about what are the efforts going to be on memorializing COVID deaths. And of course that goes back to um, the history of AIDS and a number of other kind of memorials um, to illnesses in different ways of how we're grappling with this. Um, I was shocked about to revisit the statistics about smallpox. It was something that, you know, we take for granted healthy bodies. We take in this country, there's no regard for health really as a factor. Um, but when you look back even just a, a short 100 to 200 years, you really see that people, you know, the sanatoriums, and all of those, uh, the, the hospitals, I mean, there were so many spaces. And then those images of people uh, sleeping outdoors. Uh, yeah, and I mean, you know, diseases, of course, their history have completely altered, you know, art and society and in every way. And, the, you know, the Black Death, smallpox. Um, and I'm sure this will as well. I mean, I, you know, I just want to give a shout out to Art Cake, to a residency in Sunset Park that has kind of hosted me, you know, for a few months. And I, so I'm walking to Sunset Park and I walk along Greenwood Cemetery and there's a new memorial wall of all the COVID deaths of people posting photographs. I'm going to talk about this on Saturday. 
um, just on spontaneous shrines and public memorialization of death. And, and that's happening, of course, you know, um, you know, right now we're in it. And, and obviously we're all out on the streets as well, protesting, you know, the, the many deaths at the hands of the hands of police officers. And so it's yeah, just, and I had a conversation today with um, Tess crew, which is a, their legendary um, Bronx graffiti artist from the early eighties. Yeah. And they've been doing um, public memorials, right. memorial graffiti walls for right. 20, 30 years. And absolutely. You know, if you look back, of course, they've done tons of police brutality murals and, you know, um, and he'll be on on Saturday, which I think will be really interesting as well. Yeah, fantastic. I think that that's an amazing component. To, I mean, like, it's all coming together in this really incredible way. So that's very cool. And how do people sign up for the salon again, just as a reminder? You can just either, um, you can go to my website and email me or just on Instagram, just send me a message. You want to come to the salon. Um, Great. I Is it a, do you have a link in your, in your bio? No. Okay. But, but there's a salon posted, but I will email you, put your email or your Instagram there and I'll send you the zoom link. I don't publicly put out the password. So. Right. I mean, as um, you smart. God knows smart what could happen. We're having enough excitement. These yeah. Days. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I also just want to mention to everybody who ha is on right now, if you do have a question for Danielle, or if you have a question about the studio program, if you have a question about anything, um, feel free to just put it in the chat box and we will um, get to it at some point. Um, but anything else? I know that you're at our cake, you're making work for a yeah, so another I'm month. Making drawings. Um... And, you know, if you don't know RK or the Elizabeth Foundation, please, you know, look them both up. Um, but I'm on, a, I'm on a much more limited schedule. So like everyone else, my life of being a mother, a professor, um, an artist is all of a sudden completely in my house. And, um, you know, my life is delicately balanced between all of these things usually. Right. with time and now of course we're in a completely different configuration right. um so i have a limited amount of time i do go you know to make work but my other days have been really working on these kind of social projects um mm -hmm. and developing the salon which we have four speakers um it's a lot you know a lot of research and of course you know we're working on anarchy which like, even though I'm doing memorialization on Saturday, I'm working on anarchy. Anarchy for the next one, right. So know any good, anyone knows any good anarchists? Ooh. Um, and, yeah. And I feel like, so you know, excited. anarchy is such, it's such a relevant, again, a relevant topic, especially when we think about, you know, what is the, what is the use case of capitalism and what, <laughs> what's the beginning and you know, end? We, we put a ban on doing salons one after one but we we were both I was so excited about anarchy and I felt like we had to talk about it now so yeah. we're doing we're doing it next week um, so it stays on on topic you know Fantastic. with everything I'm I'm definitely gonna come for that one <laughs> so if there's any questions um, yeah any you know. question yeah any questions that anybody has let's see I don't think I missed anything I'm just gonna scroll back and make sure um but yes, again, you know, it's been so it's been so difficult to actually, you know, focus on a project. But it is this amazing thing that you can at least, uh, after this time, have this incredible group of people that you've been working with for this time. And it's just yeah. It's I mean, amazing. you know, I'm interested in a lot of different things. The way, you know, many of you are, and some of them are not really. Um, I want to say naturally related to art right so so it's interesting to bring in these kind of these voices that are so different from one another um in in many ways and like i said they are being documented and they they are online um, are you generating like reading lists from this or are you using you know, it I'm going, just... the reading lists happen naturally during the salon because right. people are posting anything related to the subject so there's books, um, there's films people post, there's other artists. So as things move along, um, artists and activists and people from all over the country are posting things. And I encourage that through it. Right. Um, I do a talk usually in the beginning where there's headings 
of certain things that are researched. Um, so a lot of books get recommended. That's amazing. It. I mean, I've just been thinking too about sustaining attention. I mean, obviously it's, it's difficult to do that, but do you think that there would be any of these topics that maybe you would revisit again to yeah, sort of build I mean, up on? Like I said, with, with illness, we did isolation, we did illness, um, magic, Every one of those salons, I had a short list of 10 to 15 people that are just amazing, right? Right. Um, and they could certainly be, um, I think, developed even more. You know, I think the, the main topic that the salon naturally stemmed from was how are artists, um, how have artists made work through history when there were really difficult um, difficulties, whether it's world war, any of the world wars or the Holocaust or Vietnam. Um, and I made a talk actually for my students on that to keep my students inspired. That's how, yeah. you know, I felt like if Kathy Kollowitz could be starting and she could go and make drawings of people during the Holocaust, we could make work. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, and in fact, it's like a rally to stay engaged, Absolutely. to keep making and producing at a moment where, you know, maybe it feels like we're breaking, you know, mentally and physically and socially there's, but at the same time, it's like, it's, it is actually maybe the moment to make, make your comment, make your statement, you know, make your, what, think, whatever. You know, artists are cultural recorders <laughs> of what is happening and they reflect and make sense of the world around us. So historically, mm -hmm. I, it's important for artists to be making work, you yeah. know, if they can. Um, and I do I think it, it is a funny thing where, um, you know, potentially artists are the most useful. <laughs> I mean, we're not very useful yeah. in general, but if we're going to be useful. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. We are <laughs> useful. <laughs> <laughs> like they're not, you know, not to proclaim any but usefulness of artists of, at like, all. This actually came out of like pedagogy and teaching and um, that's good to hear. You know, so it's, and you know, I think teaching was something in a way that I used to think I'm an artist and I am a right. professor and there was a real separation, right? Right. Um, and that separation has, it's gotten closer and closer for me of intertwining of what is my work socially, performatively, um, in teaching and in bringing the public into my work in a different and way? Yeah. I'm not just interested in having a painting. I, I do show in galleries. I am interested in that conversation, but I'm also interested in having work on the street and having work that exists in a social form and so forth. Yeah. Oh no, where'd my screen go? Can you see me? Hey, Natalia, no, you're gone. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, there I am. I was like, oh, no. I was waving to people, and somehow I touched something too much. But um, along those lines, I mean, I think that that's something that's so, it's reflective of my practice as well, and allowing myself to understand that these are different strategies of engagement, and then allowing them to cross-pollinate and saying, like, the, you know, the things that the sort of questions that I'm asking as an educator are relevant questions when I go into my studio. And it's not even so much like I'm using, I'm not creating a, a curriculum or syllabus necessarily in my art practice, but I do, um, I do, I do try to challenge myself now. It took years to come to this realization that it was okay to bring my sort of like educator hat into the studio. Cause it feels like somehow, I mean, the thing is, like, if you're if you're a working artist and you're teaching right. and you're a professor, or whatever you're doing, um, you know, the same questions that I pose to my students are the ones for me. Of right. I'm, I was, I said to them, I'm also locked out of my studio with right. no materials in my house with you know family responsibilities and things. And how do you change and acclimate as an artist? How do you make something useful for other people to engage with? And um, I think that's the responsibility of the artist, really. You know, Absolutely. of course, it's the same. It's the same questions that I ask myself. You know, yeah. that I that I ask them. And and this is really what came out of this, the pandemic salon. That's so. That's so great. And I just and I just love that you. I just love that it started from this uh, desire to uplift your students. 
and maybe even it's for your, even yourself potentially to uplift yourself from this. <laughs> It's like somebody did it in the past. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it's really, it just seems, again, it just, um, there's been a lot to be upset about, but I also think that um, there's just, oh, oh, Danielle's frozen. Danielle, let's see. Oh no, we lost Danielle. I'm gonna find her again. Let's see. Hello, apologies everyone. We just temporarily lost Danielle. I might have to, let's see if I can find her. She has to get back on. Oh no. Okay, I might have to end this and start again. Apologies everybody, but thank you for joining. We may have just another 10 minutes of conversation.